Nope. All right. There we go. Now we're recording. Stop. There we go. We're recording. Okay. So zoom in nice and tight. Okay. So first thing, make sure he's well restrained because um, you don't really want him kicking around. That makes it very difficult. We're going to do the anesthesia at the base of his penis is where we're going to inject. The neurovascular bundles run on both sides laterally. Just go subcutaneous. We inject right at the median refae. Make sure you're sub -Q and not intercavernous. Draw back. Inject about half a cc on one side. And about half a cc on the other side. We do it distally so we don't screw up our landmarks. We'll just cover him up for a second. Nora's going to take care of that for us because I know him. Switch to our sterile gloves. Oops, Make absolutely certain your lidocaine is without epinephrine. Remember that fingers, toes, nose, and hose do not get epinephrine or things will fall off. Don't be cheap with your betadine. <laughs> You want to go move? Move that diaper? Yep. Yeah, it's Kimberly or me? Mm -hmm. Try not to. Okay, sorry, buddy. This is the part that everybody hates the most. It's cold. Gonkos come in three sizes 1.1, 1 1.3, 1 and 1.5 centimeters. Err on the side of the smaller gonco. You won't make a mistake with too small of a gonco. You can get into trouble with too big of a gonco. It's using the 1.1. Yeah. Honestly, I don't know anybody that's ever used the 1.5. But I know that Check your gonco and your bell and make sure that the size that's stamped on both of them matches up. Once you spray it, you put sterile drape on, and you're going to get going. All right, buddy. Get a warm blanket for you. Two clamps go on, one at the 3 o'clock spot on the foreskin. I'm sorry, buddy, one at 10 o'clock. Make sure you're grabbing just the foreskin and not the urethra. You don't want urethral restrictions. You're going to break up any adhesions. We insert right in there the foreskin. Make sure you tint the skin up so you don't wind up intraurethrally. We're going to gently slide down to the base of the foreskin. Okay? Then we repeat the process with just one end. Go down and clamp. Anything that gets clamped gets cut. So don't clamp too much. All right, buddy. You did just me. If you have a sharp end on your scissors, make sure that you're using only the blunt end. Small little cuts, again, tense. He's fine, Kimberly. He's doing just fine. Okay, we're going to push back on the penis. This is our first glance at the corona. We break up any adhesions just with our fingers here. Yes, wonderful. One more, buddy. I know. Nobody likes this part. One more. Good. Okay. Good. Pull that back. Some people like to use safety pins here. I don't. We just pull it in place. Clamp around it. You're doing it right there, Benny. Pull that off and get that. Don't pull itself. Ten seconds more and you're all done. We're just going to clamp the foreskin so that it doesn't fall off the bell. Pull it through. Make sure you pull through everything that you can size. Because you don't want to leave them with a notched foreskin. So there's the edge of the incision. That's good. We're just going to snug it up so that things don't slide out. 
take a quick last look. This is our last chance to adjust anything. Everything looks wonderful. Now we tighten. Make sure you get it real tight. This is what provides 100% of your pottery. I know, Ben. I'm sorry, Ben. And for all intents and purposes, we are done. I prefer number 15 blade. Because it's just smaller and much less likely to slip and actually cut the crack of the penis. Nothing that you can't control with pressure, but because we want to be able to send him home in 30 minutes, if there's even any using at all, we'll use some silver. And this tiny amount of oozing here in the hospital, I wouldn't even cauterize, I'd just leave him with the nurses. You're wonderful, buddy. <laughs> Let me get the sharps off the table, and then Aunt Nora's going to dress that. Can I stop it? No, because I'm going to record the dressing. Okay.